Hello, Trash64 here with part 3 of my Kingdom Hearts 2 playthrough. Now, if you see, I'm level 4. Um, normally at this point you're level 6 or 7. That, I'm level 4 because I've been running past all of the enemy mob or enemy mobs. And I've been doing that because the XP they give it really is insignificant. Just gotta go fight Axel here. But the XP they give is insignificant in terms of this game. The game, all enemies have a certain XP tier. In e and then how much that tier gives is varies based on the, the what world you're in and how far you are in the, pl the story. Each world has like three sections round, except for um, Twilight Town because you go back to Twilight Town more, and Hollow Bastion, and the world that never was. Those are the only three obvious exceptions. But other than that, the worlds will have three phases basically for XP gain. Those phases are. First rotation, second rotation, and once you beat in the second rotation. Now, if you notice here, these guys give 15 XP, the dust give no, uh, 9 XP, and the little do the little guys give 6 XP. The when I become Sora. They'll all be bumped up one level. This level, one level bump up will change it to the little dudes being worth 9 XP, the dust being worth 15, and the other guys being worth 21, I think it was. Anyway. This battle is quite easy. With, but th that's uh, like 1.5 times what it was before. And also, I will have Goofy and Donald. Now, in the early game, Goofy and Donald are actually incredibly overpowered. And th especially Goofy, because before you have magic... The enemies are scaled for you not having magic, and Goofy never has magic. This just makes him more powerful. And so you kill- the enemies do get a buff, but the buff is only what, like, twenty- two times that HP I think it is? And you're killing them at, you're doing about four times the damage to them you were before. So, you wind up leveling much faster after you get this. Now, you want to be about level 9 or t 9 or 10 at the top of the tower when you get Valor form. This is actually this is quite easy to do if you're level 6 or 7. However, from level 4, it's going to require a bit of work. Just a bit. But nothing major. Because really, the big deal there is, you know, once you get Valor form, you're going to encounter, you're going to start encountering Heartless, and Heartless are scaled differently than Nobody. So, uh, the entire you being super overpowered during this little segment just wears off. See, Donald Goofy and Sora in his little short shorts. Awkward short shorts because he's been 
in the thing for a while. Not quite 358 days, I think I touched on that last episode, but... Yeah, so now I'm just heading up to the train station. And this time, I will fight any mobs I come across. Because now it is actually worth the time. Now, you might be thinking it's, oh, you're going to be 100%ing this game. And that little bit of time won't matter that much. But really, any amount of time I can save in terms of the grind. Also, during the Roxas segment, you won't get any, uh, mats from the enemies you kill. It's another big thing. And really, because I chose the, um, because I chose the whole mage build, until I get Thunder, the, uh, unlike Donald there, who get, has Thunder already, for some reason. But anyway, until I get Thunder, the, uh, because Thunder is extremely overpowered. Until I get Thunder, this game is going to be more difficult than it needs to be. Fire in this game is completely worthless. Blizzard? Blizzard's only used in a melee DPS build be with long combos. Because you manage to freeze the enemies and then a combo finisher will break them from the freeze so you want to have the you want to ha make sure that combo the combo finisher is as strong as possible this is done by doing long combos and the ability that powers up the combos based on how long it is now one thing this game is missing and you might have just noticed this is Donald just healed Goofy in the first game this would put it on a visible cooldown where the character photo flashes blue while the character won't heal anybody else. And really, that's not... In this game, it's until... You can judge it by until Donald gets MP haste. It's about the same length as the cooldown. There is, a, like, a 20-second cooldown on thing. Oh, yeah. Get on the fucking train. Who cares about the treasure chests? I'll get them later when I can move out around the world faster. Hello, Pete. How are you doing today? Dun, 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 dun. Now here you do meet Heartless, but they aren't scaled. Like, look, you see these shadows are about the same way, about the same strength as a Dusk, but they only give, you know, two pit points. That that only applies to these shadows you know these shadows are scaled to the uh... the um... hollow bastion hollow bastion scaling simply because they're the only shadows you really have to fight And, uh, shadows in this game, their AI is much more passive than the, uh, than the previous game. So, really, it's just about doing the DPS. They're not going to kill you. If a shadow ever kills you, not any shadow, mind, an actual shadow ever kills you, you are a fucking idiot. Kill 
all the heartless. It's battles like these that get very annoying, where there's just one shadow left who refuses to come above ground. Now, to prog progress up and to the next room. But once again, two experience, not a big deal. Now here's the first soldier. The soldiers can give a bit of trouble when you're this under leveled. But soldiers are really only any sort of threat in three plus. Because with one or two, you can hold them off indefinitely with your attacks. See, now soldiers are giving 10 experience points, which makes them somewhat worthwhile to fight. Once again, this is about... It's still not that worthwhile to fight them, but... Mm. Now... You're, once again, the level, the whole balance between fire magic and thunder magic is really poorly done. But wait a sec. You have Valor! Now, it, in this game, the, um, with the mage build, it fixes the issue of, you know, wisdom being fucking worthless. Which, you, yeah, wisdom's just fucking worthless with any other build. This build, it's got some value. And you can always put your high attack strength things into... <sighs> put your high attack strength weapons into Valor. Because normally you have high attack strength weapons in your main hand. And you don't get an offhand weapon in Valor. Or in Wisdom. This And because Wisdom is governed by your... Um, because wisdom is governed by the, by your magic skill, your, the wisdom damage, it really just isn't worth it going into wisdom because it costs the same amount as valor. The main pro plus for wisdom is that all of those ranged attacks are technically heavy blade attacks, which means that they are not thrown off but when you hit say a um large body now if we go into the synthesis here this these synthesis lists are actually the most annoying thing in the entire game except maybe getting you know that last treasure that you just can't find in the uh gummy ship routes God damn it. Now here's some nobodies. If we look at how... If we look, they've been scaled up. They now have about one and a half times the HP they previously had. And they now give 19... Or 18, sorry. 
18 XP. Oh god. The thing about doing that is I'm not exactly using the controls that are the most effective for cycling through these commands. Hey, you guys! I see you're still in time. Now, one thing that's actually quite interesting is you can see now that this is sort of a mainstream video game as opposed to Kingdom Hearts 1, which was just this little. Which was primarily just like a Final Fantasy esque game for fans of Disney. This uh, this game, the character models, they have smaller tits. Now, this is because in Disney wanted to make the game more family friendly, and really, it's just it wasn't an issue in the first game, you know. Now, one thing I want to see in this game is Ares. When you fight Sephiroth in Kingdom Hearts 3, if Kingdom Hearts 3 ever comes out, I want to see you stop the scene with Ares getting killed. Oh wait, what am I doing now? I think I'm going to the breach with Leon. I have never found a use for tents. I find that anytime I would use a tent, there's always a save point nearby. At least in Kingdom Hearts 2, anyway. Kingdom Hearts 1, save points were very sporadic because they could only afford to have, well, what, what was it, um, 64 of them in the game or 32? Anyway, one of them, they could only have afford to have a very limited number of save points in the game, so the save points were very sporadic. Now, Sora and Goof, or Donald and Goofy have been switched out, and now I fight with Leon, defend the gate. Reversal is very good here, because it stops them from attacking the gate. And their AI will target the gate before it targets you. You can actually injure the gate in this, which I thought always thought was interesting. Now Leon is hitting that samurai guy toward the gate, which is pretty retarded. Because the on their own, the samurai people oh look, level eight already. This is why I'm talking about the XP scaling. Now the samurai guys on their own won't really move. They'll only move to attack- oh god, that was a lot of HP lost in one hit. Suppose for the- for the second phase, I, I actually can't even go Valor in that. Do I have anything? Okay, so it automatically bounced stuff. Wait, when did I get Blizzard? Oh shit, I accidentally used my potion. Now what's interesting is, I actually got a second Keyblade there, but I can't switch that out with my pro with the Kingdom Key yet, because 
That would mean not having a Keyblade in Valor. And the game doesn't like it when you do that. Now you can really see how much magic I actually have available to me in the early game like this when I choose the staff. Normally my magic would be running out right about now if I chose a melee spec. Thirty XP for the uh samurais, that's quite a bit. I really haven't been using counter very often. I need to fix that. I realize how stupid it was for me to have gone into that because it would probably would have killed me if I missed it. There we go, fire element. Fire element hits so for three hits and then will eventually you know just win this. Now you can see Twilight Town is blocked off. Hey, we're to Twilight Town. It's yes, it is gone. Now the gummy ship routes. I wonder how that will work with, um, digital controls. I can use the high wind. Shit, what's L1 and R1 in this? And, uh, okay. Should just by default be on full auto. Now, in case you can't tell. Gummy ship battles do actually scale up in difficulty, depending on what your difficulty is. This will make Assault of the Dreadnought nigh on impossible for me. Assault of the Dreadnought level 3 is actually... It's really difficult by default. Then they're going to wind up just giving you... You know, that that's that blade attack that he does will one shot you generally with uh when you're on normal difficulty on proud difficulty I don't even know just glances at you and you die
Now this is actually all rendered. It might not you might not be able to tell with some of the enemies, but this is all rendered on a three-dimensional plane. This can actually cause in some of the bigger battles on the actual PlayStation 2, this will cause frame rate drop. I mean, I've gone down to, what, like, 5 FPS in the big battles? It's quite bad, actually. Because it's also rendering everything off-camera in those sections. Well, um, I'll see you guys next time.